G'day guys, and welcome to G-Man Speaks. Today, I'm gonna to take it a video called Divorce Lawyer Reveals Three Behaviors That Destroy Relationships. And this is a sort of podcast slash call between a YouTuber called Doug Bopst, B-O-P-S-T, go check him out, um, with a divorce lawyer who's become quite, quite prominent um, in this space called James Sexton. So let's get started. What have you found to be like the things you hear over and over and over again that you've heard that have consistently just destroyed marriages and relationships outside of like the blatantly obvious things? I think a big piece is just losing what I called like the cheerleader thing. You mm -hmm. know, there's a time when you're first in a relationship where like you really – you're just in this person's corner, you know, like you're, you just, the things they do, you're just a fan, you know, like even the things that, that, that might be a little annoying or something, like they become sort of like charming things about the person, you know, like you, you kind of overlook the bad and you look at, at the, at the, you know, at, at the bright side of everything with that person. And then it's become very, in vogue in our culture, I think largely because of media, you know, every TV show, like you got the wife who's rolling her eyes at the stupid husband, you know, and the husband who like secretly can't stand his wife. And she's just like this awful woman who doesn't sleep with him anymore. And, you know, all those tropes that make like the married with children or any of those, you know, sitcoms. And then I think people think that's how marriages are supposed to be and how people are supposed to relate to their spouse. But I think that's a really good point. And guys, even guys who have been through, um, you know, bad divorces and, and bad relationships, think about to the start of when you're with somebody, you know, that, that cheerleader thing, it's very true. You'll have someone who's really in your corner, like you said, who will be trying to um, encourage you, um, give you positive reinforcement to chase things that you want to do. Um, and just being overall really pleasant um, and being very much a team player. Right? And that's great. Like that, that's, that's that's some of the like when I look back into my life, that was some of the most fun, most exciting, um, really positive and optimistic times when you're with someone who you think, wow, you know, me and you against the world, we're going to take the world on, we're going to combine forces. You know, you're also encouraging them, right? You also want to see them succeed, but a lot of the time that doesn't last, um, and that's just the reality of it. Uh, and, and, and I think it comes as part of, and I talk about this in a lot of my other videos, guys. It's, it's, it's part of that initial six to sort of 12 months, 18 months um, type phase where you can do no wrong by each other. All right? And then you end up thinking that life's going to be like that. Life's going to be amazing. Um, you're going to have that support all the time. And then you make a decision to get married or move in or whatever it is. And then things erode. And then you're left wondering what happened. I don't think successful marriages look like that. Like successful marriages, they're cheering for each other. Like they're in each other's corner. There's a loyalty to each other. There is a, like a, I'm not saying, you know, you, you ignore bad things happening or bad choices that your spouse is making. I don't think that's healthy for your spouse. If you love someone, you know, it's good to, to help them see their blind spots. But, but it, that can be done in a way that I think is, is loving, right? And affirms that you're a fan of this person. Look, constructive criticism is criticism. Like it, it's got a bow on it. It's constructive, you know, it's not, hey, you suck. <laughs> it's, you know, hey, what you're doing sucks. But it's still hard to hear, you know? So there's ways, I think, to move forward with change or, or suggest change in your partner that, that aren't criticisms. I think I think that's what a lot of guys um, experience, right? Things become nagging, or you're being compared to somebody else, or maybe that trajectory that you were going on when you first got together that slowed down, or things have happened in your life that derail. You know, you might have been going up, you might have been um, looking like you're going to get these promotions and you can afford a nice house and have nice things, and all of a sudden you lose your job, the economy goes bad. Um, or maybe that business you were trying to start and was initially succeeding really well, it turns into a real source of stress for you. You're spending a lot of time on it. You're burning money. You're not making ends, mate. And then that sort of support starts to weigh off and it becomes nagging, uh, it becomes suggestion, constructive criticism. Hey, why don't you do something else? Don't worry about that, um, I don't know, stupid YouTube channel, G-Man. It isn't doing well for you. You know, Stop putting all your time into that. Just forget about that and go get a job down at you know, the local accounting firm or whatever it is, right? And uh, be a good, steady, stable guy. And a lot of guys get resentful of that. But in saying that, so 
Um, I've seen uh, women that also complain of the same thing, um, that, that, that guys don't encourage their endeavors as well because they might feel threatened by it. Um, I would fully encourage a woman. I, me personally, guys, I love women who um, who um, have done well in their life. Um, they've shown grit. They've studied or they've well, whatever they've done, they've had a job. They've worked their way up. They've saved their money. Um, they've invested in stuff or they want to start a business and they're going in 100% on that idea. I think that's fantastic. And a lot of guys say, oh, I don't want a woman who does things like that. Oh, I think that's great. And I think having a woman like that, and especially if you're a similar kind of guy, um, it can really protect you if things do go pear-shaped as well. I always talk about that, trying to be on equal parity if you're going to end up getting married or um, cohabitate. You've got to get with a woman who is on your level. I know guys say, oh, no, women don't take that. No, they, they date across as well, right? So choices, guys. Because I think that's the biggest, like, subtle divisive thing that that pushes people towards those big as you put it like the big marriage killers the big obvious reasons why marriages end i also think you know um romance sex intimacy and when i say intimacy you know intimacy doesn't mean sex necessarily although sex can be you know something that facilitates intimacy intimacy is the ability to be yourself with another person to be fully yourself with another person and so I think that that's something that we we build and value and cherish early in a relationship. And then later as things move along, we're just sort of like, meh, I don't need to talk about that right now. Like why upset the apple cart? And I don't think that's good. Like it's, there's never a good time to have tough conversations or to say something to your partner, you know, that, that that's, makes you feel vulnerable to say. But I think that if you don't, the walls that start getting built between people, it's, it gets to a place where like you can't see over those walls anymore. You can't break through those walls anymore because you've slowly built them brick by brick by brick and reinforced them. And all of a sudden you're like, hey, how come I can't feel this person's warmth anymore? And it's like, dude, because you built this wall over time, one brick at a time. And now it's so damn big. You can't break through it. You can't get around it. You can't feel or hear each other through it. And so I, I really think it's about the little things, like keeping those little connections. Or if you're in a new relationship, like just not letting there be slippage, you know, just really like making a conscious practice of valuing the connection you have. I think that's really true as well, guys. So um, as I said, I like being really balanced in some of the discussions I have. I think he makes a really good point. And this goes for both sides, right? slipping um, especially in terms of intimacy and that doesn't mean as you said buddy um, double deep throat action and all that sort of stuff guys what that's about is just generally being attentive and communicating um, with each other and a lot of marriages um, when I was married that was probably the key thing that blew my marriage up communication wasn't there um, uh, intimacy wasn't there right there was the 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 actual respect uh, between two people that might have been there in the beginning that eroded um, communication was a killer I would say um, so that's something definitely to look out for I think he makes a really good point on that I'd love to know your opinion on love a because I think I heard you say that just because you love somebody doesn't necessarily mean the marriage is going to be great or something to that effect or lo- love doesn't necessarily equal well there's a lot of people I love I wouldn't want to be married to and I think that love and marriage it's nice when they happen to intersect, but I don't think they have a whole lot to do with each other necessarily. That's what it, that's that's what it was. Yeah. Yeah, they should. I just don't. I think they're correlated. They're definitely not causal. Like I don't think being married to someone makes you love them, and I don't think loving someone makes you marry them. Because I know people. You got to think about it too, right, guys? So guys who've been married, you could have loved. You could have just easily as like loved that person, just not even being married, and being. Um, living in separate households and all that sort of stuff. But generally it's the women that um, fall into that fallacy um, of love and the fairy tale of marriage. Not so much being a wife. They want the marriage and the wedding and then you get married and you sort of soon work out that that love might have been fleeting and you're stuck and that's how it busts up. So he's right. You could love someone, um, not, not necessarily want to marry them. So guys who have been through the divorce ringer, they're out dating again. You can, you can love someone. You can have um, feelings for someone, not be closed off. But you might not want to marry them because you know that marriage doesn't equal love. Like marriage, as I say, can be a prison of your own making if you let it be. 
All right, guys, about halfway through. Uh, so if you're enjoying the content, please subscribe. Aim for 7,000 subscribers. If you want to support the channel, just watch the videos through to the end as the watch time is what pushes me out. And if you do want to um, contribute to the channel, check out my Patreon, link in the description or the pinned comment. Cheers, guys. People that love each other that aren't married, and I know people that are married that don't love each other in abundance. I know a lot of them. So I think you're making a mistake by associating those two things with each other too closely. But... I think love is, you know, love is everything. Like I, I don't, I mean, I, I, I know it sounds like an oversimplification, but I think, you know, John Lennon was onto something like all you need is love. Like, I think at the end of the day, we're here because of love. Like we're here trying to find love and feel love and give love. And most people, have of course, he's going to say that he's divorced lawyer. He's very base, this guy, but obviously he needs to keep, um, fueling his business um, through love and love equating to marriage. But I think a lot of people can say, and this is you know, maybe the cynic in me, if you think about all the problems you've had in your life, it's generally due to women and it's due to loving women and letting yourself slip and all that sort of stuff and ending up in a really bad scenario. So I don't know if all you need is love. I think all you need is respect um, and support and love, I think, is a bonus, but as we know, guys, love loves fleeting. That's that's my honest view. You can you can love and respect someone in a different way to that that limerence love that you have when it's the first six twelve months and you're all over each other and jumping all over each other because you know that that is fleeting. If you ask them about their lives, like what's important, I was a hospice volunteer for many years, and at the end of people's lives, I spent a lot of time in the room with people who were actively dying. And most people, when they're talking to a hospice volunteer, who you only get to meet because you're dying, they don't talk that much about the shit they own. They don't talk that much about the petty grievances they have with people from their life. They talk about their families. They talk about the things they loved doing, the places they loved going, me the memories of moments they loved, you know, that where they felt alive or where they saw something or ate something beautiful that made them feel alive. Like, you know, love is what we're here for. I, I really believe that. I, I think I'm being a divorce lawyer is not beat the romantic out of me. I, I think love is incredible, but I, I think there's something really, really toxic about not being a realist. Like, I think you can be a romantic and be a realist. I, think you, I think you can be a romantic and, and I think it's actually more romantic to be real and honest and to say like no one gives you their love permanently. It is loaned to you. And, and, and I think marriage creates this false perception that your love has now been permanently gifted to another person mm. and it makes it really easy to just not care for it anymore because, well, it's mine now. No one can take it away. It's mine. But it's not. It's always on loan. Your life is on loan. Gee, that's a pretty prof prophetic statement, isn't it, guys? And that's very true and a very good way of putting it is. And a lot of guys do this too with women. Um, you get married and you think you've got the woman locked in just because you're married. And then you find out down the road um, that that marriage doesn't really count for much once those feelings aren't there anymore. And you end up watching my channel or other channels like it because you just try to work out what the hell happened. Everything's on loan when it comes to relationships, like love, like love's on loan, right? It, it, I, I think it should be rented um, instead of getting married under the premise of, of love because as you just said, it's um, that loan's going to be called on sooner or later and um, you're going to be left holding the bag. You're going to get your margin call, boys. As we all know, the margin call, it will wipe you out. But I think it goes for other things too, like jobs. People get really invested in jobs. That's on loan too. You can be sacked at any minute, you know, a lot of the time. Uh, you can give 20 years to somewhere, doing extra hours, extra weekends, week, you know, all this sort of stuff, being a yes man, sacrificing. And they do a, a round of job cuts. See you later, buddy. You're gone. So I think the same thing goes for marriage and work. You think about that when you've been married to someone for a long time and then they just cut you loose, you know, like you've been sacked. Your body is on loan. It's It's ending. Everything is ending all the time. Like your life is ending one minute at a time from the minute you're born. We are born into a grave. Like we are on our way out. And I think we should proceed accordingly. 
It's like, I think if you look at your marriage and you remember it's going to end in death or divorce, but it is going to end. I think you, you're going to approach it differently. So I, I really do think that love is what we're after. Marriage is not what we're after. I, if you're after marriage, then maybe, I don't know, it's a financial thing or it's a transactional thing. But even that, why, why are you after it? Because you want security and you want to feel like someone's there for you. Okay, so marriage may not be the solution to that problem. Like you, there's plenty of bad marriages where people don't feel secure. They don't feel like they have support in their life. So I think it's, you know, what is the problem to which marriage is a solution? And if it's the problem of I don't feel loved, there, there is not a piece of paper that the government can give you that's going to make you feel loved. Or if it, I think, I think he made a really good point. A lot of people, even guys say it too, they get married for security. Women get married for security. It's security in terms of feeling safe, feeling like, you know, that guy or girl that you're with is not going to run off on you. Marriage doesn't give you security, guys. A lot of you guys, I've seen in your comments on my videos, you know, you come home from work, this happened to me. You're married, you come home from work and your house is cleaned out, moved out. They're gone. There's no security there. It's a false illusion. So love and security, you're not going to get that from being married. And I think that's a, a fairy tale that's sold to men and women. And that's why we end up in this predicament, right? It does. It's an illusion. You know, it's, it's a... It's a imaginary solution to a real problem staying on this theme people question often like i don't know if i am actually in love with this person or i love this person i don't know if he loves me i don't know if she loves me i mean i guess just based on what you just shared and then also your experience like what are some ways that you think people can know if they actually truly like love somebody and how they can tell if their partner actually loves them well i would say there's two distinct meanings right so like love is a feeling and love is a verb, you know? So, so love is a feeling. Like I, I love this person and I feel loved by this person. Like that's Fleeting. a feeling. And then love is also a verb. Like I'm going to love this person. Like I'm going to, I'm going to hold on to the possibility of good in them. I'm going to support them emotionally and, and, and spiritually. Like love is a verb. Like I'm going to, I'm going to do the work to be a good partner to this person. I'm going to, you know, that that's, so I think that you should ask yourself, like one is a feeling like an emotional state and emotional states are like clouds, you know, like they, they pass, they change. You know? yep. You're not going to a hundred percent of the time be in this like ultra charged state. Like it's, I think that's unrealistic, you know, like those early days of romance, you know, when you, first start seeing someone and like just they brush up against you and it's like electric you know like you we'd never get anything done if, if it was like that forever you know if it takes just be just be wristies and blowies and just drop a neck all the time no work will ever get done but i always say that a lot guys it's always the first six 12 months you get caught up in it don't make any decisions in the first six and 12 months that's why a lot of you guys are here um, you know, you sort of got suckered in, right? Or you feel like you got suckered in and nature suckered you in, suckered you both in, all right? That's just the reality of it. 10 years in, you were still like, oh, when they even walk past, you're like, that's, dude, that's like, that's an unrealistic, like I would, you'd never go to work, you know, <laughs> you'd never get anything done. So I think it's okay to, to be honest with yourself that like, hey, it's going to shift. It's going to change. There's going to be chapters in the relationship where, the visceral feeling of love is abundantly clear. Maybe it'll be when a kid is born or an anniversary or when you guys are sharing space in some place that's special to you or when you're having sex or whatever. Like there might be times where you feel that thing intensely and there might be times where it feels further away. But it doesn't mean it's gone. It just means it feels further away. And that's where the verb of love, I think, comes in, which is what can I do that makes this person feel loved and what does this person do that makes me feel loved and how can I get them to do that more often? You know, and sometimes I think the answer is when you love someone in the verb sense of the word, they very often then feel inspired to love you back, right? So, you know, I, I think that's a huge piece is th there's this... I like this guy, but he probably talks more than me and that's, that's a pretty hard thing to do. He's beating me in the, um, the gift of the gab department. I might cut the video there, guys. We're dragging on a bit, but um, I, you know what? It's got it's got a minute and a half. Let's go, right? But he's sort of bloody. 
spiral that sometimes happens in long-term relationships. And it doesn't even have to be a love relationship. It can be an employer and an employee is a great, less emotional example, you know, where, well, I'm not going to pay this person well because they're not really doing their job that diligently. Well, I'm not going to do my job diligently. They're hardly paying me well enough, you know, and it's like, okay, so now we're just in this death spiral, you know, where everyone's unhappy with everybody. Same thing in relationships. Like, you know, this person doesn't value me, so I'm not going to treat them with value. Well, why should I treat them with value? They don't treat me with value. Somebody's got to break that cycle. And and sometimes when, and I'm not saying you should keep, you know, trying to push a, the, the boulder up the hill. I think it's just talking about resentment, right? You, you get resentment. Um, someone might say getting resentment towards you for whatever reason. Maybe there's no communication. And then because they're not communicating with you, then you get your back up and then you're getting resentful. Bang, it all blows up, right? You end up in divorce court. Anyway, guys, I think I will cut it off there. Thank you very much for watching. I appreciate you watching this far. If you've made it here, uh, please sub to the channel, like, and put your experiences in the comments. Um, let's, um, let's keep the dialogue open. Cheers.